Knox County ended the weekend with another suspected overdose death. That brings the total for the month to 13 in Knox County and 166 so far this year. 294 people died of overdoses in all of 2017. But overdoses aren't just taking a toll on the city. They are hitting rural America hard. Recent data from the Centers for Disease Control shows the rate of overdoses in rural areas surpasses the overdose rate within cities. As 10 News reporter Grant Robinson explains, treating addiction in rural areas requires overcoming unique challenges and demands bold action. Grant. Robin, distance to treatment is just one of many obstacles for addicts in rural areas, but some bold approaches are showing promise. Harlan County, Kentucky isn't what it used to be. The county ranks third in eastern Kentucky for coal production, but jobs in coal have been declining since World War II. As of March, only 824 people in the county work in the mines. It's unusual for a, a substance abuse problem to first surface in rural areas but you had a workforce that had a lot of uh, injuries, coal miners in particular. Then in the late 1990s, Purdue Pharma marketed Oxycontin as a treatment for moderate to severe pain and claims it brought little risk of addiction. Sociologist Roy Silver started working in Appalachia 28 years ago, and he's been following the epidemic from its beginning. And then you have a high unemployment rate, you know, with a lot of idle time for people and a very addictive substance that came all together in what may be called a, a, a perfect storm. In other rural areas that didn't depend on coal, widespread poverty and substance abuse were common before prescription opioids flooded the market. Here, it's spaced out enough that you do have a sense of, I call it isolation. Some just prefer it as secrecy. You can hide in the darkness and you get caught up and nobody knows. Tom Garner found a woman dead with a needle in her arm in this Blount County trailer park a decade ago. But not every overdose is that obvious. The chief medical examiner at the Regional Forensic Center in Knoxville says rural overdose deaths are even more prevalent than the data shows. Knox County has a robust team of legal medical death investigators. Many counties don't. So obviously we are going to address all of those that frequently are missed in the um, more rural counties. So, so there's definitely a missing number or unreported numbers out there. There's no question about it. Tom Garner now runs a nonprofit out of the same trailer where he found the overdosed woman. He works around the clock to answer the call whenever anyone needs help. There's ways you can disguise it, hide it, while you're still dealing with your hurt and pain. And all we're trying to do is let them know, hey, we know. Garner has built a network based upon trust, not just with addicts, but with everyone in the trailer park. It's not just about getting people into treatment, but it also helps people with anger management and growing healthy relationships. The point is to get to what lies underneath the addiction. But it takes a community investment of time and effort. And, you know, yeah, you can go build a huge facility. You can do all this stuff, but there's an infrastructure here. You can build upon that existing. And it means so much more to people knowing they're a part of that. Garner's personalized all-in approach to restoring rural communities fits the bill for how Roy Silver says the problem can be solved. Because what rural America lacks in access to health care and good paying jobs, it makes up for in the character of the people who call it home. The kinds of people, the quality of the people, the, the willingness to help one another, you know, those are assets that we have and uh, a resiliency to deal with these problems, you know, with limited resources, you know, is also something that's noteworthy. Now, the challenge with providing personalized local care in rural communities is that it takes a lot of resources, but Garner hopes to see his model of community restoration grow into other trailer parks and other rural communities across the area. Robin. Of course, we'll be following the story. Grant, Grant, thank you. And if you or someone you know needs help, we have a list of resources online at WBIR.com. Just go to the menu at the top of the screen, click on features, and then scroll down and choose OD Epidemic. That's on the OD Epidemic page at WBIR.com. And later this week, you can dispose of prescription medications you need no longer. We are teaming up with the Metro Drug Coalition for a drug take back. It's this Friday, July 20th, from noon until 6 in our lower parking lot here at Channel 10.